Hey, what's up, guys? Today I have a special video for you guys. It's actually Genshin Impact's third anniversary. Around this time, as you may know, as I'm recording this, there is the third anniversary event now. So I thought I should do something special for this anniversary, give you guys something different, and actually show you guys my account after three years of playing this game consistently since its release. I started playing on either the first or the second day it came out, and I've been playing basically every single day since then. I'm gonna show you guys what my account looks like. As someone who genuinely just grinds artifacts, grinds the game, does whatever he wants and pulls for pretty much every character or I guess literally every character now what I'm going to be doing in this video is a bit of a different style than usual uh, I'm gonna try to edit it less I have my face cam on and I'm not streaming which is something that I don't typically do I think my chat's still enabled so if people are typing in my offline chat you might see that but anyways uh, it's around the time Nevillette comes out obviously the third anniversary and so I want to show you guys where my account is at right now I'm going to be doing this mostly in an account review style. We're going to go through all of my builds, my characters, weapons, artifacts, all of that. Talk about what my goals are, my reasoning. Well, first of all, my reasoning behind why I did certain things, certain talents that I've crowned or want to crown. For example, Nevilet, I'm still in the process of like working on him. I want to crown him and all that, but also talk about what I plan on doing in the future, how I built my account, what characters I prioritize, some advice you guys can get from this, maybe take away, and then also talk about some things that I did wrong or want to like focus on i guess in the future for example certain artifact sets that i need more of for many different characters or some weapons that i plan on pulling for anyways we're gonna do all that also look at maybe my abyss history and some other things so without further ado let's just start all right so first of all let's actually just quickly go to the character archive i want to show you guys that i have literally every character this is mostly because i need them to test to make good videos guides and stream but also i like characters a lot so i want to have a lot of them or i like a lot of characters rather is what i meant to say but when i first played before i was really like a streamer the only banner i'd actually skipped was Klee's. i remember i got venti's and then i skipped Klee because i wanted to save her child then i got child and then i kind of just pulled for every other character so i'm sorry Klee, but i bought her skin to make up for it uh, with that in mind, let's now start by looking at what characters I actually use and just all of my characters builds because genuinely I have like probably 30 to 40 to yeah, maybe 50, but 30 to 40 characters built and ready to be used at any given time. Obviously, for newer players, I recommend focusing on four to eight characters. Just focus on one or two teams to make your abyss clear easier and really just get through it. But obviously, I've been playing this game for three years, so let's talk about it. With regards to who I crown, we're gonna start with that. My talent levels are a bit sporadic from character to character. There's some logic behind it in the sense that I try to get all the characters that I use a lot, their talent levels high enough to be like efficient. What that means is usually at least least level eight, but I crown it if it's a character that is very versatile or I use in a lot of teams or I really like. For example, Shao, I've triple crowned because I love him. In the Villette, I plan on crowning his normal attacks. And typically, um, someone who's very stingy with crowns, I just like collecting them and I feel bad using them, uh, which is why I have 12 right now. But I do plan on crowning characters like Kazua that I haven't yet crowned. It's just a matter of I don't also want to spend 700,000 more up and a bunch of talent books. With that in mind, how I typically typically do talents is, as I said, the characters that I use a lot or that are very versatile or abilities that are fun or funny. For example, what's a good example? I think Shang Ling's a good example where I crowned Guoba before Pyronado just because I like Guoba. Obviously, you shouldn't do this, but I think it's funny. And then I crown Pyronado because it's broken. Obviously, I think leveling talents, leveling your characters and leveling your weapons are way more important than just artifact farming because these are guaranteed upgrades and artifact farming isn't. But I'm addicted to artifact farming. I think it's good content. I think it's fun. I'm genuinely like maybe not genuinely but almost addicted at least which is why i keep going for marginal upgrades and neglect certain characters talents even if that's something that i don't really recommend for example in an ideal world all of my nahida's talents are level nine although i crowned her skill and i do that with literally every single character that i play but sometimes i choose to neglect that to focus on artifacts which is something i wanted to clarify before we actually go into the review Furthermore, in case people are wondering why there's exclamation marks on my characters, again, I should probably clarify this. Well, that's because sometimes I accidentally get an extra constellation without wanting it, and then I have to face the dilemma of should I activate it or not? Now, for any normal player, obviously you just activate them. Why wouldn't you? It's better, more damage, more convenient, whatever. But for me, I rarely activate constellations. I activate four star constellations, especially the older ones, for example, like C6 Fischl, C6 Beto, all that stuff. But for five star characters, I try to keep them low constellations for the most part. The main exception is I have C6 Shao because I made videos out of that and I love Shao. But in general, I keep them low constellations because I want to be able to showcase them in future videos without it just being a whale showcase. What I mean by that is 
Obviously, I can like demonstrate that my Shao is C6. It'll be a video around him and everyone knows that. But if I'm testing out a new character and my support characters like Yalan, Kazua, and all that are already C6, it kind of makes it a whale showcase where it's hard to show off how good a character can be at a relatable level for some other players that may be watching. There's nothing wrong with C6ing your characters. I'm not calling out anyone that does. It's just a personal decision that I made. And another really big reason is because when I started YouTube, I feel like at that time, there's a lot more whale showcases where people felt like you had to whale to clear content. And also when I stream, I don't like it if people think that the character I'm using is only good because they have constellations. One of the biggest reasons why I unfortunately have been benching Raiden recently is because I activated her C2. Now, I'll talk about the exceptions of the five star characters that I actually did activate constellations on. Why my cause was C1, for example. But with Raiden, it's the only C2 limited character I activated outside of Shao. And I honestly regret it. Not because it's not good. Raiden is great. Raiden's really, really strong. But I feel like anytime I do something impressive or just a normal clear on Raiden, people will dismiss it as, oh, it's because you have C2. And so that's kind of why I stopped doing things like this because, sorry, my voice is dying, because I don't want a character that's otherwise good to only look good because they have constellations. And that's just kind of the choice I made because you can't toggle them. You can't disable constellations. So if I want to have C6, I'll hide them for 10 seconds. Well, then after that, I'm stuck with it forever. So first world problems, I know, but that's just my personal choice. With that in mind, I activate C1 sometimes, certain early constellations that are more convenient, that are more fun, that would just make me happier without ruining the experience are things that I sometimes activate. For example, for example, Kazuo C1 is very convenient, Hu Tao C1 is a life changer, and I played Hu Tao a lot at C0, I felt like I deserved the upgrade. And while most of my 5 star characters, as you can see, are C0, uh, sometimes I will activate them. I know I activated C1 Kaching back in the day, but that's kind of whatever. And it really just depends on a case by case basis. Another thing with why I activated C6 Shao is because if you don't play Shao, you might not know this, but pretty much all of his constellations except C1 and 6 are useless. Because of this, since 2, 3, 4, and even 5, which is only a 1-2% to DPS increase, really don't do much at all. Like C4 is the worst constellation of any character ever by far. It basically makes it to where if I want to play my Shao like a C1 or even C01, all I have to do is not press my E and it's the exact same damage outside of the 1% from your C5, but yeah. So that's kind of my like uh, reasoning behind certain constellations and why you may see an exclamation mark on certain characters whose constellations I don't want to activate. Also, this just reminded me, Deluxe C2 I activated because this was in like 1.1 before I actually thought about it. So it's kind of an exception, but anyways, uh, yeah. So with that said, let's actually talk about my account and what you expect. So obviously I have every single character in the game. A lot of my four stars are C6, not the newer ones, but mostly the old ones. And then my five star characters are mostly C0, but some have constellations. My Shao is my pride and joy, my best character by far. He's on an R1 Jade Spear with a four vermilion that took me hundreds of thousands of resin to actually get. In fact, the exact amount of resin I spent on this domain is over 100,000. It's nearing 150K and it's actually kind of insane. Actually, I think the exact amount is 100k right now, but I'm hopefully going to be spending more. Now it's in the strong box. This is all before the strong box, by the way. That's why I had to farm the Vermilion and Echoes domain and why, as you will see, my Ayato has a just insane artifact set, even if I was going for Shao, but I don't want to talk about that right now. It's annoying, but enough talking. Let's actually look at what I have. So for the pole arms I have, I actually have a ton of pole arms. Obviously, all these level one ones are just not wanted. I got them by accident. I didn't want these Jade Spears. I think it was a challenge. Every time I died, I pulled and I got a second Staff of Scarlet by accident. And how my five star weapon choices go, just to show you guys like whether or not I'm a whale, I guess, because I've been pulling since 1.0, will really depend on Damn. what character I play and how much I like them. For example, uh, when it comes to five star weapons, as you can see, I don't have even close to half of them, right? But why I end up having a lot is because in the long term, what I do is I pull for weapons that are for my favorite characters, characters that I use a lot, especially main DPSs that I think are really good weapons. For example, Tome of Eternal Flow for Nevillette, Jade Spear for Shao, Homa for like anyone, but especially Hu Tao, are example of weapon banners where I pull for them. Other examples are Freedom Sworn and Elegy, where I think they're just so good on so many, like in so many teams, on so many support characters that I really want them on my account. Whereas otherwise, I can just kind of ignore weapons, even if they are really good, because I don't want to spend the extra money and just get every five star weapon. With that in mind, I also noticed that sometimes I do need to level more weapons. Like sometimes I neglect them and just don't want to spend the resources, but I end up having a decent amount of variety and I actually try not to level multiple of the same weapon. So 
The reason why I have so many Jade Spears is because, well, it's an accident, but the reason why I didn't level a bunch of them, even if it can be better than, for example, Deathmatch on other characters, is because I like having a bunch of different weapons so I can test out characters with different weapons, maybe free to play options, battle pass options, five star options, four star, all that, so that I'm not just using the same weapon on every character. I just like having different weapons leveled. With that in mind, I also don't typically refine five stars. The only ones I've refined is I'm trying to get a R5 Jade, but separate. Like I want to keep my R1 so it's like relatable, but then have an R5 for testing stuff. And I also r 2 Aquila Favonia, but that does literally nothing. And it was an accident. But anyways, I feel like those are like the, the general guidelines out of the way. Now we can actually talk about my characters. So my Shao is on this Vermilion set that, as I said, I spent over 100,000 resin on. Genuinely like years of my life in that domain. It was my most cleared domain for like two years straight ever since it came out with that in mind i've gotten super unlucky here like genuinely i don't even have a good anemo goblet on this set my best one is this one 13 percent crit rate which is fine right but if you spend 100,000 resin somewhere and your goblet here is not even close to being as good as your offset one or as your onset goblets in like any other set for example you can think of hydro on let's say heart of depth where i have one that i guess is similar but also has em and attack i have a cryo one well that's not the right set but I guess I'm just trying to say that like the amount of resin I spent in this domain compared to, for example, 5,000 to 10,000 max in Heart of Depth is just me being super unlucky and it's just been kind of depressing. With that said, I got lucky recently. I finally got this feather from the strong box. You might've seen that video. And now my Shao is genuinely looking really good. I believe he's top 50 worldwide on the leaderboard thing, which is pretty cool. His ratio right now is 88, 222, 117 ER with a bunch of attack. Now, I don't think this is my best ratio, but it looks aesthetically pleasing. It's 88, 222. So this is the one I'm using, uh, but I did like optimize my Shao and it depends on what ER I'm going for. If I want less ER, I have a better flower than this one, which is this one right here with 14 crit rate. And overall, my Shao is just really good. I also have Staff of Homa builds where I would just give this weapon to him. Obviously now it's, well, 666, six, six, but I would go for like a crit rate circlet and there's just a lot of flexibility here. Generally though, what I like to, I guess, show you guys is I have so much Vermilion pieces. Like I've thrown away probably more than double of the amount of pieces that I'm showing you right now that were plus 20, but got unlucky and I had to throw away because they weren't good enough. The pieces that I keep, and you might be like, well, how do you keep so many different Vermilion ones, right? The ones that I keep are either really good like a lot of crit value and I feel bad throwing them and I'd rather use it as just an offset piece on someone else or it's a really funny piece that's just bad like this one that well this one could be good it has a lot of ER but uh, I'm sure there's a bad yeah okay I'm yeah, so this one has 1400 HP. Obviously, it's just painful to look at, but it's funny. So I keep it to remember a time when I was suffering. And that's kind of how my account goes. It's a lot of really good builds, but a lot of just bad pieces as well that happen in the process of artifact rolling. So my Shao obviously has so many builds. There's so many different Vermilion pieces I can go. All of these pieces are either really good or atrociously bad. And this is just what happens when you spend this much resin here. So that's my Shao. Moving on, we have Nevilet, my probably next main. I really, really, really like this character. Super broken, super fun, and just... Yeah, I, I really like him. I have Tome of Eternal Flow. I have four piece Marie Chaussée, a new set that I've been farming uh, with pretty good substats on all of his pieces. His Sands obviously could be better. His Goblet is really good and his Circlet as well could be better, but 10 crit rate on a new set is good enough. The only thing I regret is I wish I had more HP. You do want more when you have this high amount of crit damage, but I mean, just looking at this is pretty insane. I don't need ER with the weapon I'm running. And then 300 crit damage with 52 crit rate, but 52 plus 36 from Marie Chaussée, which means I'm basically 100 crit rate. I don't really need more. Well, it's not quite 100. It's 36 plus, what was it? 52, so 88, but you get my point. Anyways, in terms of talents, this is again a situation where I really need to farm the talent books. I'm going to do that literally today. I believe today is the day I can farm it. So I'm going to try to crown him and probably triple crown him because I like him. But for now, this is my good build as he just came out. Yelan is also a character that I really like. I crowned her. I have her on four emblem with Elegy and obviously C0 with a pretty good ratio. Now, I don't think this is my perfect ratio. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I messed something up. The main reason why this could happen is because I have so many different characters that use emblem and I don't have like enough emblem sets. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a bit better, but just to show you guys, like 
I have so many characters that need emblem. There's so many different really strong supports or even burst DPSs that want emblem. That it's really hard to have a good set on everyone. So I sometimes have to steal artifacts from other characters depending on who I'm using. I did my best to try to gear everyone at once for this video. Excuse me if there's certain characters that look a bit weird. The reason why my Yelan actually, uh, his crit investment doesn't look that high and her ER could even be higher is because I think I'm on a build where I was running an HP Sans with a crit circlet, but as I was going through my characters and trying to gear more, I think I give her this HP circlet, which is really good by the way. And that's why I'm using it. So this is her on an HP circlet, but obviously if I were to take, what's a good example, maybe like this one from another character, we'll just do this to show you guys. Then my ratio would be pretty significantly higher. I could look for a bit more crit damage. I'd have more ER and then a decent amount of HP, but obviously less. With that said, I'm going to leave her on the HP circlet for now because it's just easier. Moving on, we have Dea on 4 Millilith, just a pure support. Obviously, Dea is Dea. She has teams where she's useful and teams where she's Dea. I use her on Wolf's Gravestone to buff the attack of my party members and Millilith just to you know, buff them as well. And that's pretty much her role. I like her. She's pretty cool. Sometimes I go Gilded Dreams. I'll go full Elemental Mastery or Instructor, depending on what I'm trying to do. And then I'll just try to proc some Virgins in, for example, a Nebulet team where she can actually be a decent last slot. Next is Kazuha, who's on full Elemental Mastery. I have over a thousand with a Freedom Sworn R1. Level nine talents. Again, this is a character that I want to crown, but I can't decide. Like, I kind of want to triple crown him, but I'm not ready to invest all of that into triple crowning him right now. So I'm just waiting and I probably won't do anything for like a year, but hopefully I do. I also have 160 ER, which is enough in some teams. Sometimes I need a bit more. So again, sometimes I might have to remove some EM or go a fab sword, but generally this is a pretty strong build where I'm just focusing on elemental mastery on every piece that I can get it with some energy recharge there as well. Moving on, we have Sino, who's on 4 Thundering Fury, a character that I really, really like. He has Staff of Scarlet Sands, he is double crowned because I love Sino, and he has a 93 to 21 ratio, some EM, some energy recharge, and just a good character that I like. Most of my Thundering Fury is really good. I got this from the strong box. I didn't actually have to farm it that much. I just spammed the strong box because it was in the strong box. And I have some pieces like this one that's insane, but I'm not even using it right now. And that's kind of what ends up happening because I'm so artifact addicted that I have more artifacts than characters so um yeah i definitely should prioritize some uh some strong boxing as uh, some sorry some talent leveling as well but i'm getting around to it Next up, we have Yai Miko on two piece, two piece. I'm going based on substats. I know that Gilded Dreams and Golden Troop are both usually better on her. A Golden Troop is what I want to try to go for, but I only have one good set right now and it's on official. So we're just kind of existing on two piece, two piece. With that in mind, my substats are really good. Again, the Vermilion, I have a ton of excess off pieces or like two pieces from farming for Shao. So I can use it on so many different characters like Yai Miko, who can use a lot of these substats. And that kind of is what goes into building a good character. It's not just crit. Obviously, you want other stats for Yaimiko, Elemental Mastery, Energy Recharge, even Attack Percent are all great substats and things that I try to give her as well. Obviously, her attack is pretty low because I want Kagura's. Uh, well, Kagura's has a pretty high base attack, but I'm just building EM. I'm on an EM Sans for an Aggravate and maybe even Hyper Bloom team, but mostly Aggravate. And we have a good crit ratio and enough Energy Recharge. Moving on, we have Raiden, who is on my emblem set. I think she's decent right now. Yeah, 67, 153 with 269 ER. There is definitely room for optimization. I am by no means the best Raiden. But again, part of this comes from one, I don't think I farm Vermilion. I think Vermilion is the domain that I really need to go back to the most, or at least Strongbox now, because there's a Strongbox. Emblem's in the Strongbox now, which is great. But because I have to share Emblem between so many characters, I end up having a pretty mediocre ratio on all of them. But again, like this circle is pretty good. This off set piece is insane. Feather and Flower are both really good as well. So I'm not complaining. Obviously my Raiden is still really good. I just don't want people to think like, well, how is your Raiden? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's not bad. I'm coping. Whatever. It's pretty good. Uh, Kaching eight on everything. Uh, this is also a situation where I use Kaching a lot. So I have no clue why she's not level nine everything or crowned. Maybe it's because I don't have the talent books. I guess it must be that. But I genuinely want to level my Kaching's talents because she's a character that I use a lot. I have her level 90 on a Jade Cutter with a 400 Fury Elemental Mastery Sands because we're aggravating. Uh, attack is still fine though, but yeah. Really, really good ratio. We gain crit rate from our burst as well. So we actually hit like basically 100 crit rate here on top of 247 crit damage. So a really good Kaching overall. With that in mind, could level her talents. And moving on, we have my Alhaitham who's on Lo-Fi, Light of Foliar Incision. For Gilded Dreams, sometimes I run Deepwood if I'm playing him in a solo Dendro team, but usually I play him with Nahida. 
So four Guild of Dreams is perfectly like the best in slot. And then I run really, really good substats on him. As you can see, every single substat here is useful. EM, ER, crit rate, crit damage on Guild of Dreams, which is a set that I actually got really lucky on. Okay, I need to like chill. <laughs> I'm trying to like speed run this video because I feel like I would bore you guys if I talk for too long. But this is an account review of an AR60 like fully invested account. So I guess you guys don't mind if it's a longer video. So I'm going to like calm down a bit. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so my feather is the same. Really good stats. I have a lot of different Gilded builds because I farmed this domain quite a bit. I don't know why this piece is on Dory, but all of these I could use on my Alhytham. Same with Sands. Now the Sands is interesting because I go for an ER piece, like an EM main stat, obviously, but with 20% ER on the subs because I noticed my Alhytham without this really doesn't have enough ER. And so that's kind of why I use it. If I'm just going to look good to have more crit investments, then I go for this Sands right here, which has 13 crit rate. And actually, that's one of my problems with Alhytham is that, and this goblet kind of sucks, but it is what it is. The, the, the main problem I have with Alhytham is that since Light of Folio Incision gives you 88 crit damage, it's really hard to have enough crit rate because you're getting so much crit damage inherently that even if, like me, you're running a crit rate circlet, 6% here, 7% here, 10% here, and 7% here, you still end up not having a 1 to 2 ratio. This is actually 1 to 3, which is obviously far from ideal. It's still really good. Don't get me wrong. My Alhytham is really good. I just wish I had more crit rate, which which is something that I could do if I go for Jade Cutter on him. I do occasionally, but it just feels disrespectful not running his signature, so I use that and uh, just try to make up for it in my artifacts. With that in mind, I also make sure I have enough energy recharge, which is around 140 typically in the teams that I play him. So just enough of that, as much crit rate as I can get, and then a good amount of EM and crit damage as well. Nahida is next, and Nahida is a character that it's just really broken. Everyone knows this. Uh, you use her in pretty much every team as an on-field, off-field support, but also an on-field dendro applier if you have no one that can apply, that can be on-field in your team. For example, Nilu Bloom likes Nahida on-field or certain like, I want to say aggravate teams, but I guess like spread quick swap P teams can run Nahida on-field as well, or can just weave in some auto attacks on her or whatever. And since I'm someone who likes playing Nahida on-field, I don't have full EM on every piece. I know that for off-field Nahida, triple EM is typically optimal, but it is substat dependent which is why me personally, I just go based on what I have. I have a good EM Sands, I have a good Dendro Goblet on set, but if we look on my Deepwood, I don't even have a single EM Goblet. So even if I wanted to go triple EM, I couldn't really, unless I go like an EM Circlet, which I might have. Yeah, I do. But anyways, uh, so I'm running just, you know, crit rate, a Dendro Goblet, EM Sands, and then a 103 EM Feather. And on my flowers, I don't have a single piece that has EM either. I think one might have like 20. No, not even. So that's kind of why my Nahida is a hybrid, where she has 625 EM, a good amount genuinely, but also a decent crit ratio. And then you get more crit rate with her passive. Now, I know a lot of people are going for a thousand EM Nahida. That's typically optimal for off field Nahida builds. So, what I recommend, and it's what I might go for eventually, but since I also use her on field and want her to deal, well, yeah, on field crit can be more valuable. And I don't have good EM pieces on Deepwood right now. Maybe I need to farm it more. This is what I'm going for for now. And sometime in the near future, I might change this to full EM, but it is what it is. Nilu is next up, and Nilu I really like. I actually have a really good Nilu build where in a Hydro Resonance team, I actually have over 60k HP. Right now, obviously, um, you can't see that, but on field, she'll have over 60k, and she's running two piece, two piece of HP. 20% here, 20% here, and then HP main stats on the others with substats really not mattering. Obviously, you can go for some EM. Nilu mains or optimal Nilu players would be like, well, why do you have no EM here? I should. Genuinely, I just should. But I also think Nilu is, for me, a statement of... Look at this character who at C0 with like no weapon, no talents, just performs well. Like her teams do a lot, even if your Nilu has no investment other than just HP. Obviously, Nilu Bloom teams, you try to proc your blooms on your dedicated full EM procker, like a Kokomi or like, you know, maybe Candice with Yao Yao or whatever character you're using for that. Barbara also works, but Nilu does get some blooms from time to time. So having some EM on her is decent as well. Personally though, I just stack HP and because I said it's a statement and I didn't feel like pulling for key, I just didn't want to spend the money on it and I don't pull for every weapon. I think it's funny to use her on dull blade with level one talents and I've cleared every abyss with Nilu. Like my Nilu teams are genuinely very strong because none of this matters. Like, yeah, your Nilu could do more personal damage, but when you're blooming for 30, 35K, then it's not just about your Nilu's damage. It's about this and it's about this. And then her weapon and her talents literally don't matter. Now, obviously if you have key, that's a huge Huge team DPS increase. Please use key if you have it. Else you could use the new HP sword that just came out. And part of the reason why this isn't on Nilu is because, well, it just wasn't out until like right now. So I never really had the chance to get it. And because of that, I just thought Dull Blade Nilu was funnier. It makes people kind of see Nilu performing like this and be like, what the hell? I didn't know Nilu could. And then that's just 
my funny way of saying how free to play she is. With that in mind, now, because there is a new HP sword, even though it is gotcha, I might use it on her. You could also use something like Xyphos, Freedom Sworn, or just any EM sword like Iron Sting, but I just don't care because it really is a very small DPS increase, like genuinely in the grand scheme of things. And Del Blade is just funny. And also the non-funny, like viable part of this is some characters can just be ran on low investment and you can get a lot of value. If you're someone who's like, oh my God, I have so many characters to build. I'm at Abyss like 10 or 11. I don't know who to invest into. Well, for Nilu, if you're playing a Nilu team, you could just give her HP main stat, HP main stat, HP main stat, and then look for HP substats on your flower and feather, two piece, two piece, ignore the rest. You don't really have to focus on your weapon. You don't have to focus on your talents and you'll perform well. Obviously, you know, you can use a better weapon than Dull Blade, but you get my point. Kokomi, I have many builds on her, and it actually upsets me that we don't have artifact presets. That's my biggest complaint in Genshin. Please give me loadouts. I have so many artifacts, like genuinely look at this, and so many good pieces are on nobody right now because I would just like, I want to use different sets on a specific character, but I have to manually swap between them every single time, and it just wastes so much time. First world problems, I know, but with Kokomi, for example, like, well, I think she's like the best example because she can be played to proc Bloom, right? If you're proccing Bloom, you want Gilded Dreams or you want Flower of Paradise Lost or like two piece, two piece, but you get my point, an EM set. If you're using her as a support, you want Tenacity the Millith, that's a second set. If you're using her as a support, but maybe like an on fielder or you want her personal damage from her healing to, to be buffed, maybe you don't care about the damage that Millith would give you, then you can go Ocean Hued Clam, that's three. You could also go like Deepwood if you're playing a Dendro team and you don't want the Deepwood on your Dendro character, that's four. Arguably Instructor, arguably like some other sets as well. It's just, there's so many different sets you can go and I have to manually swap each time or even Blizzard Strayer or Marie Chaussé in a crit Comey build, which I think is funny. Obviously this one is full EM, I don't have crit rate, but I actually like playing crit Comey. I would either use Solar Pearl or my Royal Grimoire, which nobody should buy ever, but at R5, this gives Crit Comey just a lot of crit. I want to make a video on this. I didn't do it yet, so pretend you didn't hear this, but that's the only reason why I have this terrible weapon. But otherwise, I use Sack Frags, Full EM, or I give her Thrilling Tales. I didn't pull for Donut because Thrilling Tales is broken, and that's kind of how I play Kokomi. Kokomi is one of my favorite characters. That's why I crowned her. My name is Kokomi Fan. I'm I'm just a Kokomi fan. I love her. But yeah, that's the only reason I crowned her. Otherwise, her talents are kind of cool for on field, but off field, it doesn't really matter. Again, a good character, even at low investment. Next up is Hu Tao, who I really want to triple crown, but she's not actually. Can I crown her? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Whatever. Okay, that's one crown. But I do want a triple crowner. I love Hu Tao. I'm a Hu Tao enjoyer. I have Staff of Homa. I have C1. I played her at C0 for like a year, got used to jump canceling. Then I said, you know what? I don't hate my life, so I'm going to get C1. And I did. And I have really good Crimson Witch artifacts. Now, keep in mind that when I was looking up, like optimizing my Hu Tao, my Reminiscence is actually better because I have Reminiscence pieces that have like no wasted substats that are just really good. But I don't enjoy Reminiscence as much. And I'm just on Crimson Witch for now. But even with that, my build is really good. Actually, I want to show you guys this. Kind of a weird flex, but who cares? It's a video about me. I have a really good onset reminiscence pyro goblet, which is why my reminiscence is so good. I wish I had this on Vermilion for Animo. I, I wish but it is what it is. And so even with this build, my, I mean, my Crimson Witch, which is a bit worse than my Reminiscence, I have a really good ratio. 32k HP, 80 to 5 with 100 EM. Now, obviously the optimizer will tell you, you want some more EM here. I can also use like Dragon's Bane, but I don't want to do that. The only reason why I don't have more EM is because I actually don't have the best Crimson Witch substats. I don't even have a single EM Sands on Crimson Witch. This was a problem since I was maining Deluke at AR40. I just never got a good Crimson Witch EM Sands in my life. But anyways, really good Hu Tao for now. I also balance my Crimson Witch pieces. I share them between some pirate characters, but we'll talk about that in a little. Next up, we have Sucrose, four Verdes Inventor, EM main stat, EM, EM, and then EM substats, and it is what it is. She doesn't have as much EM as I wish she had because my best EM pieces, like I don't have the most good EM pieces on Verdes Venner, and the ones that I do are on Kazua. So like this one has, well, this one's really good actually. But yeah, my flower is terrible because I don't have a good EM Verdes Venner flower. I have this one, which is insane. It used to be my Shao's flower. And then uh, back in 1.0 when I had the best Shao and I was two piece, two piece, and then they released Vermilion and my life has been worse ever since, but it's okay. Uh, and then Marie Chaussée, which is also getting better for Shao. But yeah, uh, I'm going to be normal for this video, so. Yeah, anyways, so like my better pieces, like my only EM goblet on set, I only have one, which I guess is unlucky. Maybe I threw one away in 1.0 and I didn't know. But um, yeah, my only good EM goblet is on Kazua. Well, it's not even that good, but it's EM main stat, which is why my Sucrose suffers a little bit, but it is what it is. Averon, either Thrilling Tales or Sacrificial Fragments, depending on what I'm doing. Hogushin Ring would be good, but I don't have it because 
I didn't finish the quest, but it is what it is. No town levels, one, one, one. Obviously, it looks like four because of constellations, but again, this is to prove a point. Sucrose needs like no investment. She's just, well, you want to level her to 90 for more swirl damage. You want to give her EM, but after that, talents don't really matter. Just use her to buff your team, to deal some swirl damage to group enemies, and she's genuinely a really broken support, even if she's a bit clunky and not the most fun at times. Next up, we have Kaya, character that I use every single abyss, pretty much to doing my four star clear. Sometimes I'll do clears four star team. Well, every abyss I do a clear of four star teams. And one of the best ones is reverse melt Kaya. I use Kaya, Rosaria, Shang, Ling, and Bennett. I just got Wolf Fang from the new battle pass. But before this, I used just a free to play option. I use Iron Sting to reverse melt, or I would use something like maybe Black Cliff or Favonius. And I usually run him on four emblem. But again, since I geared all of my characters, I can't really steal them. Like sometimes I would steal emblem from someone else. But for now, I just went two beast, two beast based on substats. With that said though, substats are good. I wish I had some EM if I am reverse melting. So maybe some optimization to be done there. I might have to look into that a bit more. I might have to give him Iron Sting. But for now, this is what I'm running just by playing him in like a reverse melt team and general, general, I can't speak, calm down. Generally, genuinely, generally performing pretty well. Kuki next up, again, really low investment, but it doesn't matter because she's level 90, full EM, EM weapon, EM artifacts, and she just destroys everything in Hyper Bloom. She heals, she pops the cores, will Hyper Bloom for you, and I'm on my pieces in Gilded that have the most EM. 72, 103, and then EM main stat, EM main stat, EM main stat. Obviously, I could be going Flower Paradise Lost, but that domain isn't very efficient, at least for me, so I just stayed away from it like I should have stayed away from Vermilion. Next up, we have Fischl. Fischl's on four-piece Golden Troop, the new best in slot set for her, which I am upset about, not because I don't like Fischl. I love Fischl, one of my favorite characters, and I think she is broken. And if you don't think she's broken, what's wrong with you? But anyways, the reason why this set, I guess I'm upset about it, is because not only was Fischl broken before it came out, but also, well, obviously a new set is good, like I'm not complaining, but I just, part of the reason why I was coping in Vermilion is because, hey, I want to get the best set for my main character, which is Chao. And not only did he release a new set that is about as good with Marie Chaussée, typically like, well, it just varies based on substats, but about as good, generally speaking. But they also released a better set for characters that would otherwise be able to use 2 piece 2 piece. For example, before Golden um, Gilded, what is this set called? Golden Troop? Yeah, Golden Troop. You could go a lot of different sets on Fischl. You could go with Gilded Dreams. You could go with Thunder Soother. You could go with 2 piece 2 piece And it was genuinely a competitive option. Not that, like, almost best in slot, basically. And I had really good Vermilion 2 pieces for my Yai, my Fischl, my pretty much any other character like this Electro Goblet on set and so many of the other, even the off piece sands that I'm using right now. But now it's just like a 20% DPS increase, 15 to 20, if I switch to Golden Troop. So I have to farm a new domain and end up never using these pieces again. Anyways, though, this is my new Golden Troop set. I spent over 5,000 resin here. There's a video about that coming out soon. Please watch it if you want. For now, it's pretty decent. As you can see, I got a lot of EM subs though. Pretty much all of these pieces that I got, 84 EM. 86 EM, 63 EM. We look at the feather, this one has none, but then this one, which arguably is better. I should probably use this one. 40 EM, this one 82, 80, uh, 75, and then even one of my flowers. No, never mind, it's only 35. But you get the point. Kind of got just a ton of EM rolls, which isn't bad, but it kind of forces me into using Aggravate Fischl. And personally, while I usually play her with Dendro anyways, since I use Fischl in almost any team that wants an Electro character, I also want her build to be versatile for non-Dendro teams as well, where EM would be more of a waste it's that. Anyways, she's on R5 string list. A decent 1 to 2 ratio here. I mean, I could use a bit more crit damage. And sometimes I swap to Polar Star, which is her best weapon, but it's on child right now. So again, I try to balance my weapons. Give, I guess I need more weapons, honestly. But like, if I'm trying to do a clear with just showcasing Fischl, I might take this weapon for her. But generally, I try to spread my weapons out through all of my characters so I don't have to constantly be taking from them. With that in mind, I think one of the biggest improvements I could do to my account is actually level more weapons because I actually have been leveling this harp today, but I feel like some of my characters that I like and use don't have a weapon unless I take it from someone else, but we'll see that a bit later. Next up, we have Beto, Serpent Spine R5, one of the most, probably the most broken battle pass weapon. Serpent Spine is just stupid. It's so good. He's on four emblem, pretty good stats. As you can see, I have to share my emblem between a million characters, but it is what it is. Enough ER, a good ratio, and just a lot of damage. Next up, we have Shinyan, who's level 90 for some reason. The Bell, two-piece Heart Adept, two-piece Ocean Hued Clam, one-piece Prayers for Destiny. You might not have known that you can have three set bonuses, but yeah, you can. Why am I running this? I don't know. Please don't do it. I just think it's funny. This is a showcase of some of my bad pieces. We have 30% defense here on a piece that has crit. We have 986 uh, HP, flat HP, which isn't even bad, but 
you know, uh, not bad on the ocean huge clam set, but it is what it is. A Geo Goblet with 1500 HP and Ace uh, Prayers of the Destiny Circlet. I have some other characters that are also showcasing my bad pieces, but we'll get there later. Next up, we have Bennett, Noblesse Oblige, high base attack sword, or highest base attack sword, full energy recharge on every single piece, and nothing else matters. Obviously, I could optimize him to give him power damage bonus, some crit, but I don't really care. Ito is next, four Husk of Opulent Dreams. I have the Red Horn Stone Thresher, level one. I'm going to Vine Boom that. That's not edited in. It's a soundboard. I'm going to do it again. And the reason why is because... As I said earlier, I wish I had more weapons leveled, okay? This is partly me being addicted to artifacts. It's partly me being like, can I level this weapon? I click, oh my god, I need Rift Hounds or Rift Wolves. I would rather cry myself to sleep and then I don't level it. Hopefully by this time next year, this Red Horn is level 90. Also, as I said, I want to diversify my weapons. So maybe I level like Aku Amaru for another character and then give Ito this level 91. But if I do, his ratio is actually... Wait a second, that's the wrong weapon for him. It's not ideal. My uh, Ito's actually better on Serpent fine yes it is and the reason for this i'll give this back to beta though because i don't want to forget is because when i did husk i actually got a really good crit damage circuit with 13 crit rate as a substat you know good goblet pretty decent or really good defense sands and just my pieces kind of incentivize me to use a crit rate weapon whereas if i have a crit rate circlet which is forced to be on albedo for now then i could go red horn sword thresher on my ito which is something that i want to do in the future i just haven't been back to husk Maybe when Navia comes out though, who knows. Anyways, I crowned Ushi because Ushi's a cow and I love Ushi. Oh, speaking of which, I also crowned Oz. I crowned a lot of the summons. In case you didn't notice, I kind of stopped talking about talents, but I crowned Oz, I crowned Ushi, I crowned Guoba. I love my little Pokemon, what can I say? I also crowned Beto's burst because Beto's the best. And if you disagree, please respectfully look at her. I love Beto. She's also just very strong and I use her a lot. So I figured I might as well crown her. I also crowned Bennett Alt. I guess we could talk about what I crowned, but I guess we'll go one by one. As I said, it's just abilities that are useful or that I like. Next up, we have Baiju, whose talents I do want to level higher. I'll do that probably soon, but he's a pretty new character. Prototype Amber, a 4 Deep Wood. Not much to say. I have HP, I have ER. He's just a good healer that applies some Dendro. Not the most, but he's pretty useful. I like him. Obviously, I should level Amber to 90, but when we click Enhance, obviously I can't because all I do is farm artifacts. Anyways, he's pretty good. Next up, we have Lisa, who... Okay, look. I leveled her to 90 or 89 to save some resources, but basically 90 because... I think she's an undervalued character in certain Hyper Bloom or Aggravate teams. Mostly Aggravate, but could use her as an on-fielder in either. If you just need an Electro character and you don't have that many. She's not the best, but she's viable. And that's what I tried to prove and made a video about. With that said, I also think Lisa's biggest strength is being a really good low investment character. If uh, in certain teams, if you don't have a better option. For example, with Eula and Raiden, Lisa's actually a great third slot there because all you need is Thrilling Tails, 48% attack, Noblesse Oblige, 20% attack, and then this passive, which is when you use your burst, it decreases the defense of opponents by 15%, and that just ends up giving you a lot more damage. In fact, defense threat is really hard to get in this game. Not many things have it. So Lisa's passive, Lisa's burst giving you that is actually pretty cool and uh, a pretty underrated part of her kit. The hard part is having enough ER. So what I do is I usually just give her the most energy recharge that I can, or you can run her with Raiden in that Eula Raiden team, and then you can just use her for her burst. So yeah, that's Lisa. Uh, next up, we have Kirara, who's on Dockhands Assistant. I just pulled for it, which is why it's not fully leveled. It literally just came out, and I yeah, I can't level it. But yeah, Dockhands Assistant, an HP sword. I used to use Sapwood Blade before it came out, in case you were wondering. If not, I use this weapon on my free-to-play Bennett clears. Well, my Bennett's not free-to-play, but when I'm doing like a four-star clear, I use four-star weapons, so I give him Sapwood Blade instead of Aquila. But yeah, Dockhands Assistant, four Deepwood, just to reduce the resistance of enemies. And then I stack HP to have a tankier shield. Next up, we have Barbara, who's on Nymph's Dream. I forgot about that. And the reason is because I crowned my Barbara's normal attacks. I did this two, maybe even three. No, not three, but around two and a half years ago. And I just like DPS Barbara. It's funny. I 9-starred the Abyss with it. You can vaporize like 150k because her charge attack scaling is randomly high. Well, I guess it's like normal. This is like a normal charge attack scaling, right? Well, okay, this guy's not crowned, but you get my point. It's like not that far off. But the reason why it looks high is because you can vaporize it 
and play her with like Kazua, Bennett, Shang Ling, whatever. And I think it's just funny. So I like Barbara, never underestimate her. Genuinely an underrated Hydro support. But yeah, usually I give her either level 90 Atlas or Tome or Widsith. And then she's on four Nymph and the artifact stats here are actually pretty good. If I give her a crit rate weapon or a crit damage one and I go crit fishing, it's whatever, but mostly I mean build. Yeah, next up we have Toma, who's on kind of whatever right now. Ignore this. This is just because I'm playing him in a Farzan, like Farzan, Bennett, and then either Wander or Shao. So for Pyro Resonance, the best slot there is oftentimes Toma C6, because if you have C6 Toma, you get 15% plunge attack damage for Shao and 15% normal and charge for Skara. So he's just a really good option here. His artifacts don't really matter because, well, in that team, Farzan has Millith. So that's how you're getting your Millith buff. And then Bennett has Noblesse. So the only other supportive set you could use is like, Technically, like, you could give him like four emblem for more damage or like exile, but you don't really want that. So whatever. And then just five lance just for a shield and uh, some damage. Ganyu, I have on a Shimanawa's Melt build, which is pretty good. All of these stats are great. EM Sands, really good substats. I have a lot of good Shimanawa's pieces, but not that many good emblem ones. It just, it's life. And then I have a level 70 Harp, which used to be level one, but obviously I just share it with Linny, the level 91. So this is what it would look like. And then I gain some crit rate if I use her burst, but I guess in this team, I don't use her burst. So I don't know why my crit rate is so low. Probably an oversight on my part. I guess I forgot about Ganyu. I'm sorry, Ganyu mains. So I probably should have done something like, let's just take this from Ningguang for now. Yeah, I mean, this would be better, right? So that's just an example. Some EM to melt, but yeah, it is what it is. I'm not going to ruin my other character's builds. I'm going to give that back to Linny. I used to use Ganyu a lot. Now I've been benching her a bit, but maybe, who knows? Maybe Ganyu I will be a character that I use a lot in the future. Night, Dad. Damn. Do I have to keep that in? <laughs> Next up, Deluke. Um, new Deluke guide will come out at some point. I've been saying that for like years. He was my OG main. I started by maining Deluke and then I kind of main Shao and then I'll height him and all that. But I like Deluke, okay? He got obviously power grabbed by Shang Ling who came out at the same time of him, so as him. So it's not really power creep. Hu Tao is better. Other characters are better, Linny and all that, but it is what it is. I like Deluke. He, I think he looks good. I think he's still, I mean, he's decent. I think uh, there's some potential that's unexplored, some things that I could cook up with him, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I run my Four Crimson Witch, kind of the leftover pieces from my Hu Tao. He's on Mailed Flowers because it's a good free-to-play option that I got during an event. Eventually, I will crown him. I promise. I just don't know when. Right now, he's on a decent ratio, some EM from the weapon, and uh, he holds his own pretty well. Next up, we have Shang Ling, everyone's favorite uh, chef, the best. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I just definitely uh, an overpowered character, but I have my Shang Ling. She's double crowned because I love Guoba and then Power Nado is just a good ability for Emlo's third fate. This changes, but typically I'm running this flower, this feather, this sands, EM sands, because I'm usually vaporizing sometimes more than one reaction as well, but usually sands, it's, you go based on substats, so I, I alternate. I have her on the catch, and her ratio is pretty good. Keep in mind, I gain crit rate here, so it's not 56, it's 56 plus 12, which would be uh, 68. Sorry, I'm dying. So, not that bad. I wish I had a bit more crit rate, but again, when I have all of my characters built at once, it makes them a bit worse, because obviously, if I want more crit rate, I could go something like this feather, but this feather's already on my Yalan, so if I do this, my Shangling now, boom, instantly got better, but now my Yalan's a bit worse, so I have to kind of share these pieces based on what I'm doing, and I think the biggest thing that I wish I do for the next year is farm some more emblem and level some weapons so that all of my characters can be built at the same time. With that said, we now have Albedo, who I genuinely have not looked at for like two years, but Albedo. <laughs> I, I said in my last Albedo guide that he would get better when we got new Geo characters, and it's been over a year that we haven't gotten one, but maybe Navia, so surely she'll save Geo. Anyway, Cinnabar Spindle for Husk. I, I still think Geo teams are pretty fun, but I genuinely haven't touched this build in so long. It's kind of whatever, just a bunch of defense and then some crit rate value and a Cinnabar Spindle. Keep in mind the new Marie Chaussée set could actually be better than Husk on him, depending on if you have Cinnabar and Goro in your team. So I could be switching to that at some point, but my Husk is pretty decent. So well, I mean, it's not that good actually. So I might, we'll see. Anyways, next up we have Zhongli, who again is a famous build swapper. I usually run him on four piece Tenacity of the Millith, but right now I am playing him with Nevilette and Nevilette's teams don't really need Tenacity of the Millith. So I go Petra, I pick up the crystal of Hydro or Electro or whatever, and then I'll buff my party members uh, accordingly. Sometimes I go Millith, as I said, sometimes I go Deepwood, but for now I'm on four Petra. Terrible stats, by the way, because I don't level my Petra pieces. Like why would I level Petra? Why would I farm Petra? I don't really care about his HP. My, I'm good enough to dodge to where my shield's not gonna break. 
Okay, I'm not that good at the game, but... Well, okay, I'm not the best at dodging, but yeah, I'm. it's a work in progress. I'm okay, and usually I make my shield last, even with low HP. Obviously, I could go Black Tassel if I'm skill issuing really hard, which I have level 90, just in case I need it. Obviously, my Millilith pieces are leveled, so even though I don't have like an HP Goblet or an HP Circlet here, if I go Millilith, I actually do. And um, yeah, so that is that. Anyways, that's my Zhongli, level 9 talents. Uh, Albedo is 8. Then we have Venti, who um, I use sometimes. I use for the early Abyss floors, and then for like 12, he's sometimes really good, sometimes like not useless, but less good. Depends on the enemies. I'm on a full crit Venti right now, just because I think it's funny, and I don't have enough EM pieces. Like, I have an EM Sands, but my EM Goblets, I only have one on set, and then my offset ones are on other characters, so maybe I'll get more EM later. But when I put them on Harp, which... I'll just do for now, because when I use Venti, I usually give him Harp. He has a pretty good ratio, but even with uh, Verdescent Hunt, it's fine. And I just, you know, swirl things up and he does his job. Next up, we have Child, another character that I really, really like. I super enjoy playing Child, very fun. I crowned his burst, even though crowning his skill is oftentimes like more consistent and better, but I just like seeing a big number. I run him on Polar Star, two piece, two piece, going on substats and also increasing my burst damage. I kind of play him like a burst carry sometimes where I'll literally like Bennett Alt, Pyronado, or like Swirl, you know, Hydro and Pyro with Kazua, Pyronado, Bennett Alt, all that. And then when I vape with Child, literally everything just dies and I clear in like one rotation to where Noblesse can actually get more value than some other sets, even like four piece heart of depth, if I'm clearing fast enough. Generally though, it's just substat stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just going the pieces that I have because I have pretty good heart of depth and pretty good Noblesse as well. I also think I should farm more Noblesse, by the way. I really don't have that many, but yeah, at least it's in the strong box. Next up, we have Wander, who I called Among Us because I'm very mature and that's my humor. But anyways, another character that I might crown. I love Animo characters. I think Scar is really fun, but I don't have the mask quite yet. Also, he needs handguards, which now I have a lot of because I've been exploring in Azuma, but for the longest time I didn't because every single character needs handguards. Like genuinely, if I'm going to edit. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to put on screen all the characters that need handguards and weapons. There's a there's a lot. There's a lot, okay? So I didn't have them for the longest time. It is what it is. Uh, he's on Witsith. He's on four-piece Shimanawas. And it's pretty good. Uh, all of these pieces, except the, the Sands is mediocre, but the rest is like, this is good. This is amazing. 50% attack. This is amazing. This is amazing. Just a really good build, genuinely. I like my Wander. You don't need that much ER on him at C0 because his burst you could use kind of whenever. It's not the most important part of his kit. If you have his second constellation, then I would recommend a bit more ER. But for now, for me, this is perfectly fine. Gene, uh, kind of benched recently, but a good Anemo healer for Verdescent on crit and attack, and just that's all you should really care about. Next up, we have Eula, Red Horn for now. Sometimes I go Wolf's Gravestone, sometimes I go Serpent Spine. It just depends on what build I'm giving her. But this is my build right now: two Pale Flame, two Bloodstain. Obviously, four Pale Flames better, but I'm not farming that domain. Although it's in the strong box now. But yeah, with this build, my Eula's honestly not bad. Obviously, you would want more ER, you would want more crit rate, but Eula's a character that you can just spam reset on. I think it's funny. And also energy recharge. You can get more of by running either three crowd characters or a crowd battery and Raiden, which are things that I typically do. So it is what it is. Next up, we have Ayaka, who's a character that I really like. Aminoma. Her attack could be higher. I do want to admit that. I could get a bit more attack on her. She's not fully optimized, but decent flower. Feather kind of sucks. This one's a bit better, but it's on my Kaya right now. Feather could be better. Sans is... My best sense. This is my best artifact. In case you guys don't know, there's a clip of like three years ago, me rolling this before Shao even came out. That's how old this is. And I haven't gotten a better piece since. This is my best piece, at least crit value wise. It's like over 50. It's insane. I would literally, I would choose this over a five star character. I would choose this over going out, touching grass and meeting people that would change my life. No, I wouldn't. That's weird. But it's, it's a piece. I usually, I used to use this on Shao if I had an offset sands available, but since since I went from two piece, two piece to vermilion, I don't have a vermilion goblet, which means I can't use this as an off piece. So I just give it to Ayaka. If not, I could use this, but this also sucks. My goblet is okay. My circlet is okay. Again, I wish I had more attack percent, but it's fine. I have enough ER for Aminoma. I have a decent amount of crit damage and some crit rate as well. 
Moving on, we have Shenha, who's just on Noblesse, and then either Vortex Vanquisher or a Fav Lance, depending on what I feel like. Fav if I need more energy, Vortex if I want her to have more attack. And I mean, I guess I could have more attack. Am I on full attack? Yeah. Well, ER sands, but overall, like, it's not bad. This flower kind of sucks. Uh, balls, I don't know why I said that in a YouTube video. I'm sorry, my Twitch side is coming out, but it does kind of suck. She could be optimized, but it's still a decent amount of attack. You have some ER and she performs fine. I would also get more attack if I'm like shielded, on field, whatever, but yeah. Anyways, um, I also want to say that with my Shenha, I actually like her and I like crowd characters. So I do want to ascend her. I just haven't really gotten around to it. So hopefully this is a reminder to me to level 90 her. Next up, we have Big T, Cirnadi, who uh, I like. Now you might be noticing his attack is really low. That's because he usually uses Polar Star, which is on Child right now. But let's say I give that to him. You look at his build. Oh, four wanders, really good flower. Pretty, pretty good uh, feather. Sans, I don't have an EM one. Don't get mad at me. I know you usually want EM Sans on him, okay? I know, I know, I know, but I don't have one. Now, you might be like, okay, Zox, go 2v's, 2v's, go an offset, like, you know, whatever, but I can't, I don't have a Dendro Wanders Goblet, so I can't go offset. I could switch my set. I could go 2v's, 2v's. I could go like whatever other set is fine on him because there are many, but I just want to keep him on Wanders. I have 63 EM here. I will get an EM Sans. I know I will. I'm just going to keep killing bosses. Eventually, I'll get one. Uh, literally yesterday or two days ago, I got this piece, which is defense. If this was EM, it'd be perfect, but whatever. So just pretend you didn't see that. Pretend my Sans is EM. Attack is viable, it's just not as good. Uh, and the ratio is really good. Obviously, I want a bit more EM, but really good start. Now I'm gonna give this back to Child so uh, he doesn't murder me. Next up, Dendro MC, because Hydro MC isn't out yet. Okay, Hydro MC's out, they're just bad. So we're gonna pretend they're not out. For Deepwood, Fav Sword, really good free to play Dendro character if you don't have anyone like Nahida. Just works in a lot of teams and genuinely a good main character. Next up, we have Ayato, who. Okay, ignore the Black with Longsword. I should be on Jade Cutter, but. My Ayato was rank one for the longest time. I think now it's rank two or three, but for the longest time on Akasha, which is uh, a website where you can ra rank your Ayato, this doesn't matter. This is nerd talk, just ignore it. But basically I had the best Ayato in the world or one of them for the longest time. I still do with Miss Splitter, okay? This is assuming you have his best weapon. I don't have Miss Splitter, so I like to convince myself that my Blacklyf is Miss Splitter so that I can sleep happily at night. Now, with that said, obviously if I want, I could go Jade Cutter, it would be better, but I'm just gonna pretend this is Miss Splitter. We crowned our Ayato skill. Should probably level my burst too. There you go, I got it to eight. And I have a really, really good Echo set. Like genuinely, I don't recommend farming Echoes for Ayato because you can go Glad, you can go the other Hydro sets. What are they called? Heart of Depth, uh, the, the, what is the set called? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is it called? Nim Stream. There's so much, like you'd have to stack this first, but anyways, there's a lot you could do, right? There's a lot of sets you can run on him. You don't need Echoes. But if you're gonna, if you're like me and you're trying to get the number one Shao and you farm 100,000 res in Vermilion, you're gonna end up getting good Echoes pieces. And good Echoes pieces is definitely what I got. I even have two good Hydro Goblets that I'm not even using because I have a good Sands, a good Feather, a good Flower, a good amazing Circlet. And this isn't even a flex. It's like, I didn't want Echoes. I like Ayato, don't get me wrong, but I wanted Shao to be good. And in the process, my Ayato is better than my Shao. And it frustrates me. Now, obviously, Miss Splitter gives you a different amount of crit damage than Blacklift. It gives you, uh, I think, more. Yeah, 44 or something gives you more. But this is a really good ratio. Now, obviously, I could have a clickbait number here, which obviously I wouldn't go like lo-fi here. I'd keep it on Hytham, but this is the clickbait number. Or I could go Jade Cutter and just give him more crit rate. You could also just go like Black Sword or something. I know I could do that. I probably should, but eventually I'll get Miss Splitter. I just skipped all the Miss Splitter banners. So yeah, that's my Ayato. I guess I should show you more of my Echoes pieces. There's a lot. There's really a lot of pieces. There's like four here that are good. This is good. This is good. This we don't talk about. This is really good for Ito, who could use the defense. This is good. This is good. And this is good. So just a lot of Echoes pieces that are just sitting on my account, but I'm not gonna throw this away. Like why would I throw, I'm not gonna, I can't really give this to anyone, but I also don't wanna throw it because it hurts. So they just kind of sit there. But yeah, at least anytime a new character comes out, I have a good two piece by default because 18% attack is good on any attack scaling character. So yeah, Ayato, that's that. Next up, Linny. I love Linny. I think Linny's great. The main problem is that he has a crit rate ascension. Marie Chaussée gives you, pretend this Marie Chaussée, gives you a 36% crit rate on his four piece, which means 
you don't have that much room for crit rate left, especially if your only good bow like me is a crit rate one. Now I could craft prototype crescent or the new Fontaine one, or I could like get a crit damage bow eventually. But for now, since I have so much crit rate, if I go Marie Chaussée, I actually overcap and I don't have a good Marie Chaussée yet. Well, I do like I have really good flowers, but I don't have a good four piece on anyone other than Naviette because if we look at my Marie Chaussée, I don't have a pyro goblet and my sands, I only have HP. Like none of these, well, I just got some attack ones. I have to level them. They're plus zero. So maybe I'll get a good one soon. That's one of my big goals. Keep grinding this domain. And eventually my Linny will be on four piece Marie Chaussée. But for now I'm on two piece, two piece because it's decent. You can also go four vermilion on him, by the way. I probably should, but I'm just on two piece, two piece for now because it works. It's fine. My Linny performs very well. Really good ratio. Skyward Harp. I like him all as well. Eventually I'll have four Marie Chaussée. I might have to move away from Harp though because I'll over cap on crit rate unless my artifacts have like none on them. But but it is what it is. Next up, we have Yoimiya. Okay, okay. <laughs> I wish I could edit that out, but I'm not going to because you, what you see is what you get with me. Okay, look, she should be on Harp or Polar Star or uh, Thundering Pulse, but I don't have that many bows and I use a lot of bow characters. As I said, some, one of my biggest regrets is, or goals is to level more weapons. My sword characters and my pole arms, they're drowning in the sauce. Why did I say that? That was cringe. Look at how many swords I have leveled, like four to almost five rows of them. With bows, I don't have that many leveled. So my sword characters, my pole arm characters, they're happy. My bow ones, they really have to share. Same with Claymore and kind of Catalyst. So eventually I'll level more weapons. I might craft the new blacksmith one. I might get the new battle pass one, we'll see. But I actually also had a very high ranked, again, this doesn't matter, but really good four reminiscence Yomiya. But my four reminiscence set, I then gave to Wander. So typically this would be on her, for now it's this one. Also like this goblet right here is on Linny, but this is an amazing onset reminiscence Yoimiya one. So if I were to go Yoimiya for reminiscence, she would be amazing. For now, she's also pretty good though. So it is what it is. Actually for Yoimiya, like I know people are gonna comment this. Yeah, you're right. I should probably just level Rust. I should, I just don't like Rust, but I should. It's for, it's good for Yoimiya. That's, that's, yeah, I probably should. Whatever, maybe. Next up we have Ningguang, Skyward Atlas right now. Uh, two piece, two piece, it is what it is. I, yeah, sub stats, it's fine. I like Ningguang. Well, very pretty. I love the skin. I think she's cool. Fun to play Geo Quickswap teams. This was one of my favorite teams back in the day. There might be a comeback. You know, maybe I can play her with like Navi or something. Who knows? But um, yeah, I mean, I like Ningguang. So I keep her like decently geared. Sometimes someone else takes this Atlas. Like my Barbara's on a level one one. Sometimes I might alternate, but yeah. And also like this kind of shows you that I don't want to level multiple of the same weapon because I have like two Atlases level one that I'm never using, but yeah, anyways. Yun, Yunjin, I haven't really been using, but again, she's a good support for like Yoimiya. Farzan, I give her Fav, sometimes Elegy, but usually Fav with four Millith. Now you might be like, Zox, why are you using four Millith Farzan? Doesn't that not really work with her skill? Yes, but at C0, that's true. If you're C6, you, Farzan becomes 17 times better as a character, just a completely different character where your skill is going to be used all the time. So you can actually go Millith and buff your team. I'm also thinking of doing a golden troop Farzan build just for fun. Maybe leveling her skills talent because like I might as well for some more damage. But anyways, uh, for now, I just max her burst to give myself more Anemo damage bonus. And I just basically stack energy recharge on every single piece so that I can spam my burst. Sometimes I go for Verdes and Vendor on Farzan as well. If my team has elemental supports or damage dealers like Fischl, Singcho or anyone like that with Skara, then I might go for Verdes and Vendor instead. Next up, we have Hazel, four Venus Inventor, uh, on field, actually five. He's just on like a Taser build, Solar Pearl, decent ratio. I need to level his talents a bit more, but yeah, pretty cool. I got C6 Hazo. I actually got like many, many Kazuo copies before I even got one Hazo. That was a tragedy, but I don't want to talk about it. Rosaria, again, another character that I usually use for Emblem on, but I don't want to steal it from other characters. So right now we're two-piece, two-piece. Even then I would go two-piece Noblesse, two-piece Blizzard Strayer, but my Blizzard, again, is on other characters. So this is what we're using. Substats are pretty good for the most part. We're on Deathmatch. We have decent talents. We are C6. And we have a good ratio with a okay amount of ER. Sometimes we need more, but yeah. From an A, usually just takes my Eula pieces, but I have backup ones where it's a pretty good physical build, genuinely. Like my From an A physical is actually good. I just don't have a weapon for him. So normally I would take one of these from another character. But if I do, as you can see, his ratio is pretty good. Could use maybe some ER, but it is what it is. Uh, let me give this back to Beidou. Where is she? There she is. All right, next up, uh, we're actually getting to, we're almost done, we're almost done. Cool. Yao Yao, this is easy. I give her Fav and I give her Instructor. Now. 
Weapon wise, there's others you could go. You could go Black Tassel if you want HP. Fav is great for energy. You could also go Sapwood if you have it. But I just, I keep things simple. Fav, we like Fav around here. I love Yugui. Very cute. And, uh, oh, also, I was thinking about talents. I, I crowned this. I forgot to say. So, yeah, that's another ability I crowned. Is there anything else I crowned that I didn't say? No, I think that's mostly it. But yeah, anyways, for Yao Yao, the reason why I'm on Instructor is because in an Aggravate team, now you might not fully understand why you would go Instructor for Aggravate versus Deepwood. <laughs> Let me explain. So if you have a damage dealing Dendro character like Nahida or two Dendro and you're doing like more of a quicken, maybe some spread is happening a lot in your team, then Deepwood is a lot better, right? If it's just Nahida, that's not really true, but... Well, it's better than Instructor then, because usually Nahida's damage is good, but let me explain. <laughs> Basically, like, Instructor is good if you don't care about your Dendro damage in a Dendro team, in a Dendro reaction team. So Aggravate is Electro damage, even though it's a Dendro and Electro reaction, which means that giving your Electro characters like Kaching and Fischl Elemental Mastery, and even the last slot, which is typically like Kazu in that team, Elemental Mastery is a lot more valuable than increasing the Dendro damage of your Yao Yao. Now, obviously there's exceptions here, as I said, but for Yao Yao, like I like giving Instructor for my Kaching Aggravate team. Whereas if I'm playing her in like literally any other team in Hyper Bloom, Bloom, or uh, what's the other one? Uh, Quicken, like Spread, if I'm playing her with Al Hytham, then Deepwood would be a lot better, and I would choose to go for Four Piece Deepwood instead. Cave, I don't really use. He's basically just Al Hytham without the mirrors. He's not bad, he's just not great, but he's pretty. I like Cave. I just haven't been using him much. Probably my fault, but that's what it is. Maybe I use him more in the future. Sing Cho, I usually run him on either Sack Sword or Jade Cutter. If I'm tryharding, I give him Jade Cutter, but. Not that many other characters can use Sack Sword, so I like to just give it up to him because he can use it. And then you basically need zero ER other than a high refined Sack Sword and the two piece emblem that already gives you 20 ER. With that said, again, I'm sharing my, em my emblem pieces with so many characters, so my ratio isn't the best, but it's decent enough ER, good crit ratio. And I also crowned his rain swords because Sing Cho is one of, if not the most broken character in the game. You might disagree, but he, I, I, I'm sorry, he's just insane. Uh, he's actually just insane. Every single team that wants Hydro can use him. And even in teams where you're not normal attacking, you can just weave one in and he's still good. But usually as long as you're normal attacking, he's just broken and it is what it is. Sayu uh, is kind of whatever, like she's cool, but usually I just use Jean instead. Diona, I have her on Instructor right now. Sometimes she uses Noblesse, but yeah, I mean, it's Diona. She just shields and she does her job. We're not going to talk about Chi-Chi. And then Aloy, I actually want to crown. Now, the only reason I haven't is because I need to collect materials that I really don't want to. But I am grinding and I will crown her because you can't get her anymore. She's bad, but she's limited and she's funny and she's cool. And I like Aloy. So I'm kind of planning on making a burst support Aloy build or a burst DPS one. Uh, like right now, it's not even bad. Uh, just making her melt her burst for like 100k. People will be like, wait, that looks cool. Um... Just to maybe convince someone that Aloy is good, even if she isn't. I'm sorry if that's misinformation. I just think it's funny. So eventually, I will crown her burst. But yeah, so Aloy is kind of whatever, but work in progress. Mona, you might think I'm neglecting her, but genuinely, I use her in freeze team sometimes. I just give her fav, I give her noblesse, and a ton of ER. I don't really focus on her damage. I focus on giving my team energy and attack and buffing their damage with my omen. And Mona performs honestly pretty good just with that. I am a Kokomi lover, so I typically use Kokomi instead, but Mona, uh, I do have her like built to where I can use her in a freeze team if I want, and I just give her as much energy recharge as I can on most uh, of my pieces. Obviously, if you're playing her, level your fav codex. I just, I don't know why I haven't genuinely, like probably should, can I? Okay, I don't really have an excuse not to, but yeah. So that's that. Um, but yeah, next up we have Goro, just kind of on whatever to buff my team with some defense. So as you can see, a thousand defense here. Uh, Lynette is on a weird, just Verdes and Venner, like crit pieces I give to her because I have so many good Verdes and Venner pieces from when I built Chao with two piece, two piece that now they're on like my Hazo, my Lynette, my Scara, my Venti. So yeah, my Lynette is already geared pretty well. Sometimes I use Festering Desire, sometimes I use Sack Sword and she just, you know, Kokoyo. Sorry, that was... <sighs> I'm cringe. I'm sorry. But yeah, so she does pretty well. She probably level her talents. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's Lynette. Uh, Chong Yun, Mika, Sara. <laughs> look, look, I haven't played these characters in a while. I'm sorry. Sara's uh, cool. I like her with Raiden, but I haven't used her in a while. And like in, in a lot of teams, I'd just rather use like a more like Fischl or Yai. But yeah. 
Candice is one. I'm sorry. I actually like Candice. And I think at first Candice was kind of whatever, but with Nilu and Yao Yao, you can actually make a pretty good bloom team where Candice's burst will be blooming with your Yao Yao on field, who can also apply Dendro with her burst and stuff. And it actually makes a good four star Nilu team outside of Nilu, of course, who's a five star, which I actually really like. So I do want to level my Candice. The proof is that I got the mats. I just would not want to pick another Henna Berry for the life of me. I'm going to force myself to do it, but but the last time I did this was literally like a week or two ago when I finally forced myself to level 90 or max ascend my Farzan. Now I have to do it again. It is what it is, but I do want to level Candice mainly for that team. And you might be like, why do you have Royal Spear when you told us to never get a Royal Weapon? Please don't. I just think that the Ascended Royal Spear matches her perfectly. And I know that now that I said that, a lot of people that are playing for aesthetic are gonna do this. Please don't, it's bad, but it looks good. And if that's what you care about, like me, then cool. And that's why I did it. But obviously I wouldn't really use the spear on her outside of just that. Yanfei, I actually, okay, the weapon looks like a neglect her, but okay, I guess I give her pieces to Yoimiya, but I actually like Yanfei. I use her from time to time. When viewers in my chat are like, oh, play Yanfei, play Yanfei. I do, I actually play her sometimes. But typically she's on two Crimson Witch, two Glad. Right now she's kind of on a like mix of a bunch of stuff, but usually she's fine. And I usually give her Wit Sith on a different build, but yeah, I've kind of neglected her recently. I'm sorry, Yenfei mains, but I will get back to her soon. Maybe a new Yenfei guide, because uh, I got to get back into playing Yenfei. Now I have a um, a sad part to get into. So first of all, Kole, I'm going to remove from the sad part because even at level 6 out of 70, she can be fine in certain teams that have like a 15 second rotation because that's the cooldown of her burst, like Kaching or whatever, where I just want to apply Dendro. I don't really care about her damage. I can give her Deepwood. I can give her Elegy or Sack or something. And she actually does fine. And I genuinely use her from time to time in those teams. The other, the other characters, though, are kind of sad. First of all, Layla, I like. This is why it's sad. Like Candice, I want to level her. I promise. In my Layla guide, when she came out, I said that I like the character because, yeah, Diona will give you more energy, some EM, some stamina consumption. EM only at C6, by the way, which most teams can't even make use of, by the way, because Hu Tao wants to be under 50% HP. This is a rant I shouldn't go on right now, but this is clickbait because a lot of teams don't actually need this EM. Most of the teams that want to use Diona are either like Freeze or Hu Tao, and both of them can can't make use of it because Freeze doesn't care about EM and then Hu Tao needs to be under 50% HP and this only gives you it above. But I digress. Some teams can use it like Yanfei or Deluke or whatever. But anyways, the reason why I like Layla is because yeah, Diana has some advantages, but Layla, um, she just feels cool. You can go Millith on her. You can get some damage on top of a shield and it like some cryo application. You can use her with Wanderer. And I actually just think she's a cool character. So I do want to level her again. I farm the boss. I don't have these, even though they're easy to get. I already 100%ed like most of Sumeru except the desert. I'm just lazy, but I will level her. Uh, I promise. Now for the other characters, Klee, I bought her skin and that's what matters. What her pieces are, are uh, nothing of relevance, but Amber, I actually gave her the ER graveyard. So what I did is all of my pieces that could have been good, but instead only rolled ER and are still good for certain characters, but are just funny to look at. I gave to my Amber as a display of that. So we have this ER flower. We have this 32 ER feather. We have this, wait, I think that's the wrong sense. Okay, ignore this one. Maybe it's on Klee what I wanted to show you guys. Is it? Yeah, this defense sand that has 30% ER, which I should have given uh, to my Amber. But anyways, then I have a goblet on 22% ER and a circle with 29%. Really good for Shenha. This is good for like Goro or Yunjin or whatever. So they're not bad pieces. They're just funny. Where dreams go to die, however, is my Vermilion Noel. This is the graveyard of my Vermilion pieces. No disrespect to Noel mains or Klee mains. Character's cool. You can use her. Noel can be a comfy carry if you ever see six, genuinely. But, um, you know, Geo's kind of Geo. And uh, here's what I have to show you guys, to scare you guys, so viewer discretion is advised. Flower, 107 EM. Great off piece for Kazua, a Nilu bloomer, like maybe a Kokomi, but on its own, you know, kind of scary. Feather, 1,404 HP, as well as an attack roll on a piece that had crit rate, crit damage, attack, and presumably four stats at level zero. Tragedy. Feather, 100 EM on an attack, I mean, a sand, sorry, 100 EM on an attack sands. And if that's not enough, I also have one that has 22 ER on attack sands, but both like this could be good. Even the attack, the one that's on Noel isn't inherently bad. It's just typically if you want EM, you go EM main stat and then crit substats instead of attack main stat and then EM substats. But this is still not bad. And like this one's also good, but it's just sad that it rolled EM that much. I think it's just funny. Then we have a goblet defense. 
pretty good on uh, on Vermilion. There's no other Vermilion Goblet that's like bad. I just, I don't have a good Anemo one, but it is what it is. And then my Circlet has 1,554 HP, which is the highest I have on any piece, tying my Shin Yan's Goblet, uh, the Geo one that also has 1,554. And I'm gonna Vine Boom again because my sense of humor is immature. So yeah, that is most of my characters. There's a lot more I wanna show you guys though. That's kind of how my characters go. As you can see, it kind of, I can't speak. It kind of got worse and worse, but like the starting characters were pretty insane. As you can see, these crit ratios, like obviously there's room for improvement. My Yelan is sharing pieces with like 500 characters. So please don't judge her. She gets sad about it. She's sensitive, but like typically really good. I have better Yelan builds, I promise. My Sino really good. My Yai Miko really good. Kaching really good. Raiden is okay. Al Haitham's really good. Like I have a lot of these characters that I like really high invested into. And then the further you go, the more they're usable and genuinely pretty good. Like even my Scar is really good. My Child is pretty good. But it's like, it's hard to spread myself that thin. But generally, I've been doing pretty well. I have at least like, at least like 50 characters that are genuinely usable, right? And a lot of them that might look worse are still like, like this Yao Yao looks like her stats are terrible, but hey, I'm on Instructor, I'm on Fav, I'm healing my team, I'm applying Dentro. What more can you ask from Yao Yao? She's already ready to battle and that like most of my characters are built in either a way where they're just efficient at low investment or super highly invested into or a work in progress. But yeah, I feel like the work in progresses would be completely over if I just stopped farming Vermilion. Like I need to stop, but it's okay. I want my Shao to be number one. So it's the price we pay as a Shao main who are forced to suffer forever because we are hated by the game and by everything. Anyways, yeah, so I have a lot of crowns too. I want to crown a lot of these characters. There's a lot of improvements I could do. I think self-critiquing myself. Well, actually, I want to keep showing you guys some things. Self-critiquing myself is like some of these things, some other weapons I should level, some additional four-star ones that I want to use, like other bows, maybe a Rust for Yoimiya, maybe another Catalyst, like Favonius Codex leveling, maybe a second Witsith for just another character. So I don't have to juggle as much, maybe another Serpent Spine, but... That's a battle pass weapon, so it might be harder. Are things that I definitely <clears throat> should look into leveling. On top of farming more emblem, so that I don't have to share it between so many characters. But I think I'm gonna be doing a emblem strongbox video. So if you guys wanna see that, stay tuned and let me know because I might make a video of me throwing all of these five stars that I have level zero into the emblem strongbox. Outside of that, I can show you guys my abyss progression. Oh my God, my resin capped. Wow, I've been talking for over an hour. I was at 140, but anyways, wow. Oh my God, it capped. I look so bad now. I look like a whale. Anyways, I want to show you guys my abyss progression. Obviously, I fully cleared the abyss since patch 1.0. Not, I don't think like at the very start of the game, but obviously as I leveled past the R45 or 50, whatever, I don't know how long it took me, but since the first version of the game, I did nine star it. I don't know how back you can go in the summary, but you know, the characters I use, you can pretty much always see Xiao here. I love Kokomi, I love Xiao. Now, Taser, well, I don't know why Bennis, well, this obviously is like two teams combined, but I do try to verse, diversify my teams a lot. I do every single Abyss with Shao, just as a Shao main, I have to, but I also try to test every Abyss with different teams. So while you may see Shao a lot, I promise I also do four star clears. I do like Nilu, I do whatever other characters are hot, just to be uh, have more game knowledge and recommend characters that I think work well in any given Abyss. With that said, I'm also working on friendship for a lot of characters. In terms of exploration, if you guys care, I used to really care about this. I fully explored Monsat, fully explored Liyue, and did most of Sumeru. I didn't do the desert because I genuinely can't stand it. I don't think it's bad, I just get bored. But I did Land of Uppers Attack, I did all of Sumeru except Ashavan Realm, and I've been starting to do Fontaine. It's a start, it's a start, I know it's a start, I know this looks bad, but it's a start and I will 100% it, I promise. The only thing I've been bad at is Chasm and Inazuma. Obviously, I 100 did this, but the others are like 50, 55. I kind of just, I maybe I was a bit more burnt out during that part, but I just didn't want to explore as much. But yeah, uh, that's something I want to work on. I also want to get a thousand achievements. My achievement number is honestly embarrassing right now because I genuinely never cared about it, but I want to get at least a thousand. Like what I play the game for is characters, damage, builds, doing the abyss, doing hopefully like raids or end game, what, that won't happen. But whatever the end game is, playing with friends, I like that stuff. I like the challenging content. I like playing the characters that I enjoy, but I do still think I kind of want to make it a new goal to get a thousand achievements at some point. So I might do that, even though my achievements right now are very low, but I can show you guys in the hard one. Now, don't look at the total. I know it's low. I have 1,200 Blosses of Wealth or Revelation done, which means I do a lot of Mora and XP ley lines because I have to level so many characters. Another one of my goals is actually level 90-ing at least every character I play, maybe every single character eventually, but obviously there's a long way to go there because there's so many characters that I have to level. 
So yeah, that's my account review. If you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you made it this far, I don't even know if anyone's gonna watch this. I'm being honest. This is a long video, minimal editing. Obviously, it's a lot of effort. I'm well, not effort, but like I'm talking for a lot. But I don't know if people like this. If you like this, do leave a comment. Let me know. I want to hear your feedback. It's really appreciated, genuinely, because this is a new thing for me. I've never made a video like this where I'm just kind of rambling as if I was streaming. Twitch.tv slash Lox, by the way, if you guys want to know, uh, if you guys want to watch me live. But yeah, so let me know feedback. Should I make more videos like this? Should I update you guys in a year? Should I do a review of maybe my free to play account when I transform it into actually being good? Should I do other account reviews like this? Let me know what you guys think or other, how you, just how you like this type of video. And if there's any other questions you have, you can feel free to let me know. With that said, is there anything else I want to talk about? With regards to how much I spend, I get that question a lot. The answer is genuinely like, I just pull for every new character C0. I rare, I usually skip the weapon manners, but if it's my favorite character or a weapon manner that I can't pass out on, like for Nebulet, I just really wanted his weapon, then I'll pull for that as well. And then after that, I'll stop. And when I stream, I'll do a few resin refreshes, and then typically I won't do them off stream. Kind of just depends because I think it's more content, so it makes sense for me. But off stream, I'm not like the most like resin, resin, resin. It's kind of just, I chill a bit more, and then I try to be a bit more responsible. So yeah, this is being recorded at the third anniversary. You guys are enjoying your rewards. I wish we got more, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. This video was a lot longer than I thought it would be. I was thinking maybe 30 minutes. It's been an hour and 20 recording. Wow. Did you make it this whole way? If so, I owe you a cookie. Yeah, thanks for watching. A like or a comment would be really appreciated just to get some feedback and maybe let me know if you liked it or not. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, because you stayed till the end, I will give you a free lament, Shao. Me and Shao have a connection, Shao. Uh, can you please say Lament for me? Lament. I told you! Alright, thanks for watching, Lament. Goodbye. See you guys later. Peace.